Hello and welcome to FS Mania. This is the first installment in our Business Jet video series and I gotta say I'm pretty stoked about this series and I'm loving flying these jets. Right now we are located at the Centennial Airport in Denver, Colorado preparing for a flight to Jackson Hole, Wyoming in Coronado's Embraer Phenom 100. The Centennial Airport is freeware scenery complements of Orbix and as a reminder this was the final destination in our last flight of the Pilatus PC-12 video series. Our destination airport, Jackson Hole, Kilo Juliet Alpha Charlie, is an Orbix scenery payware add-on. Jackson Hole, located in western Wyoming, is in a valley that is 48 miles long and 8 to 15 miles wide, encompassed by mountains. Along the western side of the valley, the famous Teton Mountains rise into the sky, a sharp soaring of rock without the preamble of foothills to separate the massive mountains from the valley floor. Jackson Hole Airport covers 533 acres. It has one runway, 0119, which is 6,300 feet long, 150 foot wide asphalt. Jackson Hole's claim to fame is it is the only commercial airport in the United States located inside a national park. In this case, the Grand Teton National Park. Introducing the Embraer Phenom 100. Although Embraer is a Brazilian aircraft company, the Phenom jet is actually built in Melbourne, Florida. Embraer's Melbourne plant is a testament to Embraer's commitment in the North American market. Airplanes assembled in Embraer's Melbourne plant are made up of components that are largely U.S. sourced. This entry-level jet has integrated engine indicating and crew alerting system, FADEC engines, not to be confused with auto throttles, electronic monitoring and control of all systems through its synoptic systems, which we will be taking a closer look at during the en route phase to Jackson Hole. It does, of course, feature fully redundant flat panel avionics, dual channel digital flight control, dual batteries, maintenance friendly design, and brake by wire. All remarkable features for a jet of the Phenom 100's class. As advanced as it is, the Phenom 100 was designed to be a single pilot friendly airplane. There are three main reasons for this, the avionics, the engines, and the layout. The first two of which represent recent technology breakthroughs that Embraer has leveraged into single pilot goodness. The Prodigy cockpit in the 100 is an offshoot of the Garmin 1000 avionics suite. The Prodigy is a remarkably powerful integrated avionics system that gives the pilot a wealth of tools for managing and controlling the flight. The Pratt & Whitney PW617F-E turbofans put out 1,695 pounds of thrust apiece and they are remarkably quiet and efficient. They seem a smart choice for the 100, giving it a combination of good climbing ability, excellent fuel economy, rivaling turboprop twins, decent range, and best-in-class and high-speed cruise of 390 knots. The cabin has just one inch under five foot of headroom from the dropped aisle, and is one inch over five foot wide at your elbow when seated. That is bigger than both of its Citation competitors and also more roomy than the Beach King Air cabin, which has long been a benchmark of light business airplane comfort. So, how about we get this show on the proverbial road? Climb aboard, buckle up, and let's go fly a jet. Good afternoon and welcome aboard. This is FS Mania's flight in the Phenom 100 to Jackson Hole, Wyoming, departing from Centennial Field in Denver. We're going to start by powering up the airplane and we're going to put our input our flight plan into the Garmin slash Prodigy and grab the ATIS and we're going to call clearance and get our clearance. The uh, weather in uh, Denver right now is uh, at Centennial. It's two miles visibility, 400 foot overcast and Jackson Hole's reporting two and a half miles visibility and a 3400 foot overcast so we are filing IFR and therefore we will uh, be calling to get our clearance so we're going to start off by powering up the aircraft and we're going to cut on battery one battery two and then our ground Terrain. power unit system test okay Taz. system test okay plan and 
let's go over here and uh, take a close look at the uh, Prodigy. It's the Garmin G1000 specifically tailored for the Phenom. Very nice piece of equipment, uh, fairly well modeled. And I will say that this PFD right here, uh, we'll let these alarms do their thing. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, and thank you very much. Okay, so um, just breezing through the forums, I have seen that this particular Garmin right here, let's see if I can get over here, is better if we um, we get a little better frame rate. This airplane is hard on frame rates, and so we get a little better frame rate, and with preps and everything else I got going on here, I think that's um, to our advantage to cut that off because we don't really need it we're flying single pilot and that's one nice thing about the phenom is it's very well um, set up for that to happen lots of uh, automated systems and we'll talk more about that but um, single pilot IFR uh, in a jet um, almost unheard of so it's great so we're gonna get clear this screen out and um, we're gonna go ahead and put our flight plan in now um, we've already uploaded a video on our uh, flight planning so if you've not seen that you may want to go back and um, check it check that out so our flight plan today we're going to be flying let's bring up the page here the flight plan page um, our departure airport is Kappa so we're going to use this um, keypad down here to put in our info so the first thing we'll do we turn the little knob we bring up our waypoint page we turn the little knob again to get the blinking cursor and then we can just type in Kappa this is going to go fast yes indeed there's Kappa and we enter that and then we'll scroll down to our next waypoint there we are little knob little knob and um, we're actually going to be flying a SID there are no SIDs um, loaded in this database um, much to a lot of people's chagrin but no problem here we're flying the Rocky 2 departure and basically we're going to need to intercept a radial off the Denver VOR to an intersection so we'll just type in Denver for the VOR and we'll enter that and let's get down here to the next one small knob small knob and Zimmer is the first um, waypoint uh, on the SID so we'll go ahead and put that in and that is Z I Mike Mike Romeo Romeo there you are that's Zimmer we'll enter that and then from Zimmer we will fly direct to the Kremlin VOR little knob little knob Romeo Lima Golf enter that there's two of them first one then the next waypoint is a Victor Airway to the let me take a look where was it um, Hayden VOR Charlie Hotel Echo little knob little knob and Charlie Hotel Echo that's Victor 328 I believe if I'm not mistaken let me check my notes yes Victor 328 so we'll enter that and there's several of them it's the first one and scroll down to our next waypoint this is basically how we put a flight plan in the uh, Garmin 1000 and so the next um, fix on the waypoint uh, from Victor from Hayden will be actually a jet route J J163 and the Rock Springs VOR which is Oscar Charlie Sierra so little knob, little knob, and Oscar, Charlie, Sierra, Rock Springs, enter that, two of them, enter the first one, scroll down, next waypoint is again back on Victor 328 and it's the Big Piney VOR, so it's Bravo Papa India, so little knob, Bravo Papa India enter that two of them we'll enter the first one and then the next 
waypoint is in the last one is an intersection it's called Tubac so little knob little knob and it's spelled Tango Uniform Victor Oscar Charlie Tubac we'll enter that okay all that looks good and finally then let's put in our destination airport KJAC and little knob Kilo Juliet Alpha Charlie KJAC and we'll enter that and that's our flight plan all nice and complete now what we want to do is come up and let's make our first leg active will be the leg between Denver and Zimmer so all we really need to do is just to enter that and it's going to ask us do we want to set that waypoint active we say yes indeed okay and there you see we've got a magenta line to fly to when we depart from from COPPA. So we're going to fly off runway heading, intercept the, um, I think it's the 278 radial to Zimmer. We can um, zoom out and we'll see there's Zimmer. So there's the first layer of flight plan. And that's all there is to that. Um, one other thing we can do while we are in here is um, we're on the map. Um, in the map mode right now we can go over to the waypoint mode and I can see airports in here just curious um, I think you know I scroll through there's intersections NBs and VORs so I really wish um, I guess that this were defaulting right now to where I am which is at, um, Kappa Centennial because I want to input these frequencies but it's not so um, we'll just go ahead and and put it in ourselves so we we'll get a cursor and we'll turn let's use this we'll turn our little knob and the K's already in there so we just need alpha papa alpha papa alpha and we'll enter that and that's centennial now we've got some frequencies in here to work with so I want to put those up into our radios so we'll have them set up so the first one we want is our ATIS frequency and we got COM1 highlighted so we can flip that over and we can go ahead and grab our ATIS Centennial Airport Information Yankee 21450 Wind 3.1 at 11 Sky Condition Scaling 300 Overcast Temperature 152.3 Altimeter 2 Niner Niner 7 ILS Runway 35 Right in use Landing and departing runway 35 right in runway 35 left. All aircraft read back hold short instructions. Advise controller on initial contact. You have Yankee. Centennial report information. Yankee. Two, one, Yankee. Four, five, okay, seven. we have Yankee. Three, four, one, ten, one, so one. let's get that quietened up. And we'll go ahead now and put our departure frequency up here. So I'm going to enter that. And I'm just going to, just from experience, I'm just tell you, and change in that just a tiny little bit because we don't want ro robots talking to us. And then uh, we can go ahead and put our ground in here. So we're just going to get this cursor down here to COM2 just by pressing on the tuning knob there, the little knob. And we can go ahead and get, um, let's put tower in. Uh, actually, we want ground in the um, active frequency, so I'm going to enter that. We'll flip it over and um, let me come back and just change that just that one little bit. There we go. There's the ground. We'll pretend that's 21.8. And then the tower is 18.9er. So we'll put that one in. I'll enter that. And once again, just to keep the robots away, uh, we'll just change it slightly. So it's 18.9er. And then the last thing I think we can do while we're on this page is let's see, do we have somewhere on here? Uh, stand by. Okay, so sorry about that. It just had a little interruption, and uh, we'd have a special passenger on board today, and. Um, I'll tell you more about who that is later into the flight, um, but um, we got one passenger, and um, yeah.
special person. Okay, so ILS 35 right. I want to go ahead and put that in my NAV 1 so that we can, if we depart and have any kind of problem, need to come back and fields IFR, we'll already have that in there. So that's my plan. So let's enter that. 1113.1113 uh, and there it is. And okay, so we've got all our frequencies set up. So we can come back over here now and let's get back to our map page. And there's a couple other things we can set up in here. And we got to stop that cursor and get back over here to map. And while we're in here, let's just set up a couple other things. We've got north up. I want to set um, track up. So come down here, little knob, track up, enter that, and to close that, press there. Okay, learn all these little things by fiddling, and I'm going to cut on our topo, and also terrain, which is going to turn everything red while we're sitting here on the ground, but that will change. We'll leave traffic off, and let's go back, and um, while we're in here, there's a few other things we can do before we call um, and get our clearance. We can't set our transponder yet, but there is a timer. Um, reference and we can set our minimums for the arrival and I do know that we're going to be flying an ILS and I've looked in the oh, come on down here no, not there let's leave that just right where it is and tower, can we get the wind one more time? I don't want that on two anything one zero at one six, gust two four. there Thank I want minimums four. cut on to radar altimeter and we're going to go to 400 feet and that's the minimum descent or decision height on the ILS. So we'll plug that in. That way we'll get a little call out. And we can just, um, now that that's in there, I think all we need to do then is just close it, press right there. And we can also go ahead and put our wind um, display in here. So we've got 11 knots right now. It's good to know for starting this um, the turbines on this plane because um, if the wind's coming from um, behind us like a tailwind and it's more than this, then we need to turn the airplane around. So we got that plugged in there, and we've got our flight plan plugged in. Everything's plugged in. A couple of things here on um, the aircraft that we can set up. One LFE took me forever. I finally figured out landing field elevation. It is 6,500 feet. So you can see it counting up here. We're going to go ahead and plug in 6,500. And that's good. So we'll go back and um, we can look at this. But let me set the engine. We do need to set the um, outside air temperature and it is 15 degrees Celsius so we're going to go ahead and run that up and you can see it changing right here as takeoff data so that'll help the FADEC um, oops pressing the wrong button there help the FADEC to um, throttle the engines properly um, adjusted for that temperature and then the auto um, thrust reserve automatic thrust reserve is defaulting on um, I don't even know if I can cut it off to tell you the truth. I've tried. I think it's pretty much just going to be on, which is okay. That's what you want when you take off. If an engine were to fail, then we've got some extra power to help us to get out, get out of Dodge or Denver, as it were. So back and back and maps back up. Okay. And let me just take a look at the checklist. Um, I think we're ready to get our clearance. So I've got clearance delivery 28.3. Is that correct? Let's check that. Clearance delivery is 128.6, actually, but I probably changed that intentionally. Moncom 1. Moncom 1. 6. I just got a curiosity. I'll check it right here. Clearance 128.6. And there's departure.
There we go. And I'm just going to change it a tiny little bit. Flip it over now we can get the call. Let me close this window out. Go back to that page. Okay. So, we're going to call Clarence up right now. Just as soon as I can find my pen and paper to take a, make a note with. Copy to Clarence. Centennial Clarence Phenom 1367 Romeo at the General Aviation Terminal. We'd like to pick up our IFR clearance to Jackson Hole. And we have the information Yankee. Phenom 1367 Romeo, Centennial Clearance. You are cleared to the Kilo Juliet Alpha Charlie Airport via the Rocky II departure. Dennis filed. Climb and maintain 11000. Expect flight level 16000 10 minutes after departure. Contact Denver departure on 13275, squawk 0316. Okay, cleared to the Jackson Hole Airport via the Rocky II departure, then it's filed, climb and maintain 11000, 16000, 10 after departure, and Denver on 13275 and 0316 on the squawk. Phenom 67 Romeo, read back correct, contact Centennial Ground on 21.8 when ready to taxi. Okay, we'll do six seven Romeo. Okay, so a couple pieces of information now we have that we can go ahead and plug in. For one thing, uh, our altitude seven, we can go ahead and set up to eleven thousand feet. Three zero one five. That's good. And we need to go ahead and set our altimeters while we're in here. Two nine or let me double check what was that. Two nine or nine seven. And we got that plugged in up there, so the altimeters are set. And we're going to fly runway heading on departure, so we'll go ahead and set our heading to runway heading, which is 350. And the speed, I'll go ahead and set it up here. Um, this is flight level change. This is not 100% accurately model but um, you know we'll go ahead and set it up here to about 160 and mm, this airplane doesn't have auto throttle we're going to need to set our throttles and to fly it accurately we'll do that so I doubt I'll even use this feature but um, I went past it. it takes forever to get there okay so that is set and we can set our transponder now to the squawk code 0316 there we go and it's on everything set there the way I like it so I think we're ready to get this baby started up so um, just easy to do a flow here we can start over here on this side and this is the um, cockpit voice data recorder. Here's courtesy light, uh, the mic jacks, and those are all as needed. And um, try to get down here just a little bit closer so we can zoom in. So this is the oxygen um, we'll push to restore. It's on auto here for the uh, passenger. And batteries are on. We're in the uh, ground power and the bus ties auto position. We can go ahead and bring our generators up to auto. And let's pull back our yoke here so we can see. We'll get our belts on and our fuel pumps on auto. ELT armed. Uh, the hydraulic pump in the auto position. This should be out and out. So let's look overhead and bring on our nav light and let's get our cockpit panel lights out on. That's all I really want right there. These are off, off. We'll bring this to the air data sensor and angle of attack sensor heat into the auto position. The, um, this is the wing and stabilizer boots. They're off. Inspection lights off. Landing gear down and locked and then the fire extinguisher engine fire extinguisher is in the um, off discharges off engine start stops or stop and engine ignition auto auto and all of this we'll leave alone this is manual pitch and roll bank trim so we'll leave all that alone 
pressurization mode auto everything auto pretty much which will really leave our uh, keep our workload down and these trims are neutral here which is where we want them and air condition will leave off until after start and probably leave it off the whole time because it's too noisy drowns out my voice it's louder than the engine and I may be exaggerating that just slightly so just check my punch I mean not, not my punch list but my checklist and um, gust lock has been removed, heating panel, windshield, blah, 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 pressurization panel, dump switch out, air conditioning panel, flaps. So, yes, let's go back and just see flaps are zero, thrust lever is idle, parking brake is set. So, we are ready now to power up. And basically, it's going to be pretty simple to do. All we got to do is come down here. We'll start with engine number two. We'll monitor our engine parameters up here and we just bring our switch over to start and we'll see N2 rising, oil pressure rising, fuel flow coming up, we'll see N1 starting to spool up and when we get a light we'll watch the ITT. It's all automatic. There it is, there's our light. N1 is rising. You can hear the turbines. Everything sounds good. When they stabilize, we'll just start engine number two. I think we'll call that stable. Starting. We've got some fuel flow. Oil pressure's rising. And two spinning up. And one spinning. Watch for a light. Okay, after start we can disconnect our GPU. That's done. And we can do a stick pusher test right here and I believe that worked and I did not cut our bleeds on can see that up here so bleeds are on and we could cut our air conditioning on auto I'll do that you can see it's a little noisy I can't really hear the engines I'd rather hear them and it really doesn't um, affect the environmental control system on the aircraft um, so it's apparently not modeled. And our passenger hopefully will still be happy. Um, NAVCOMs are set and we've got our AADIS transponder set and our flight director will set that at the end of the runway. So let's just call ground for clearance. And ground is in here, so we'll go over here to COM2. Centennial Ground, Phenom 1367 Romeo, ready to taxi with Yankee. Phenom 1367 Romeo, Centennial Ground, runway 35 right, taxi via Alpha. Via Alpha to 35 right, 67 Romeo. Alrighty. Brakes off. Brake, brake, brake. Oh, baby. There you are. Brake off. Now, it does take, uh, you can see at idle, we're at 27% on um, the N1, so. Um, the plane starts moving around 50%. So you really have to give it some um, some throttle to, to get it rolling. And it's a little different from most of the jets that I've flown. There's 53% and I don't, we're just barely starting to move.
So we're going to conclude part one right here, and part two will be our departure, take off, departure, and climb out, uh, and transition to the en route phase of the flight. So uh, thank you for watching. I hope you'll stay tuned and join us for part two of this ongoing series of flying business class jets from FS Mania. I hope you have a great day. So long.